afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda, here off-site like Defender of the Fatherland. We're off here to an exciting two versus two on rails and metal between the South. we got legendary Stark fighting here for king and country and for America, forming up a combined group here from elements of the 4th Armored Division and the Guards Armored versus the Germans, the Huns of Insane Hoshi and Jeremy fighting here both for the Oba Commander Vest for the Panzerlea Panzer Division. Doctrinally, we're looking heavy cavalry, rifle company, tactical support, special weapons, mobile assault, and vanguard operations versus fortifications, firestorm, scavenge, special operations, and breakthrough with the bulletins pretty much all aboard the, across the board here for infantry. Those slightly varying sort of types there. We got full infantry there from both German players and for the Allies, it's all infantry as well. Both sides sort of trying to make a bit of push here for the Eastern Sarp. In this case, though, we also, oh, well, we also got Universal Care out here for start, though, so that's not quite true there. It's not all infantry, there's a Universal Care here, a bit of very, very light armour to support the Allies here as they push for the Eastern Sarp, whereas the Germans also pushing for the Eastern side, and that's essentially not really making any direct moves for the fuel point here, meaning the Allies might actually get up a small resource advantage over the Jerry's. Folks, guys, moving up there in the Eastern side in the centre, Universal Care here, supporting the re echelons. Germans taking points here and then actually got a slight movement there towards the west. First engage here, Volkswagen versus the re echelons there. Car 19k, so this is M1 carbines. We have a bit of time, we got the Mercer car then engaging a another Volkswagen. We have stream parts moving in. The re echelons probably won't last very long since they're actually not in cover here, by the way. So there we go. Two men down, they hit the deck, get out of there. Rear right from the rhyme, they're quickly cutting down Paul Jurgen. Universal Care now faced with a lot of attacking faults, kind of these trying to prevent them from making for the house, at least to buy time for the ramp to do it, but looks like it might not be in time, might not be in time. Oh, Fultz has managed to get there right before the rifleman. Fultz is in here, and they're overall losing up, though at the same time the rifleman needs to get to proper cover, there go taking fire there from the house. More Fultz will bring up Universal Care down to half health here. Cool bag and raquette maps on the way there for the Germans, for the Allies, it's just Vickers and more riflemen there. There's a lot of fire here, Rifleman being slowly surrounded, Fulks is in each move up to support, they can't really do much there, but only poor Otto left to do the shooting while the rest sort of comment on it. Yeah, Otto, a bit to the left, a bit to the left, yeah, that's better, Otto, that is better. Still pioneers there, but the section, Universal Code doing the count there. There we go, tried to shift out them, in this case didn't quite work out, and the Rifleman's set now going to the house. Let's go there, Fulks has got to retreat, got a bit of grabbing up territory on the west, Kuvard moving in as well. Three Fultz guns, one to jump, spot one cool one there for Hoshi. And Jeremy there has gone already here for special operations. Not even three minutes of the game. We've got a doctor and a chosen there. Fultz there quickly covering up the trip. The Steel Pioneers are quickly getting wiped there, but looks like they will manage for now. But overall, here the Germans had a brief advantage, but ultimately wasn't able to really pull it through there. And the Allies were able to basically stand strong, but they're pushing back the Germans. So that's a bit hard there. At least the Germans managed to grab here, but still the Allies will have gained a bit of a recent advantage, I think, over the Germans here. Over the Hans, the Krauts, the Kenneth creeping up there. Fultz is here being charged up a rifle, they're getting flanked as well by another rifle court. Plus, we still got the Universal Care and a Vickers here overall here. The Fultz kind of just will not be able to maintain the position for long. More being pushed in there by Insane Hoshi, who needs to retreat the other squad here. Plus, so does Jeremy. In the west here, we got a single Steel Pass squad they're standing about here. Section sent running, Reasons moving up there. Kuhlwagen almost got the fuel point. And there we go, gets the Universal Carrier. Small victory there for Germany. And overall now they do have the fuel advantage that the Allies and them can't. While they were able to hold this area, on the other hand, post a lot of resources into it, meaning they couldn't really expand a lot elsewhere. That does mean the Germans have the advantage overall now. We got here, trot on the way there for Jeremy. As for Insane Hoshi, nothing there as of yet. He's still tier one. Fox goes firing in from there. Car 98K sounding off sharply against the Rifleman there. We got an M20 out there for Legendary. Now they're a lot players yet to sort of go for Doctrine. Tech wise, we got Tech up there for Stark. As for Legendary, it is the Lieutenant here, of course, since he's getting the M20. No extra surprise move. Not Captain Stood, but Lieutenant M20 there for Legendary. Trench is being ducked here by Stark in the centre. Come on, lads, be quick about it before the hands arrive. I'd like to get a tee up, some tea up before they come. Sections then getting the strong pioneers, cool one moving about here, and there we go. Trench ready to go to help defend the central victory point. Germans moving in there. Battle group headquarters in a rather forward position there by Jeremy. No mechanized regiment here. For example, to sort of for some rush out some luxus versus the Allies. Cool and then he's been carefully taking heavy damage here from the section. We also got Lieutenant arriving there with 
VARs and Thompsons and other goodies. Fultz going to have to support the Storm Pony's playing in the raft a bit there because we've got Lieutenant. We've got more Fultz arriving here. Looks like they're giving up here. Lee's done to so bring up some more heavy equipment. They can sort of flush out the Vickers there. Otherwise, they'd have to pull off a pretty big attack from several angles, which of course might be a bit more difficult to coordinate between two players so you can get one to do. Meanwhile, here, M20 moves in, gets the cool wagon, collapses the entire western flank there for the Germans are now pouring everything in can to the center. I mean, at least they're working together, but obviously, in terms of sort of teamwork, I'd call this pretty. Uh, well, crass. I mean, it rather lacks any sort of finesse or any sort of real tactical movement. It's just relies on sort of mostly brutish force, and even then, it's not really making much progress. Falling back heads towards the Bell Group headquarters. We've got a flag half track there for Jeremy. Flag half track always, I think, not really a good choice at the moment. It just lacks something for its price tag, really. Mechanized range up there for Insane Hoshi. Looks as Pumas, perhaps. Either way, that's probably going to do a lot better than the flag half track. We got there. Oh, he's grabbing the point there with the M20 crew. Bit bold. Couldn't theory go slightly wrong, but as long as there's Lenjo is paying attention, which he is, I mean, he's still going to be able to harass the fuel point there. So good work there by Legend there. Some nice M20 play. Bit rare to see here. Old snowing armored skirts have been added. In the center here, to mining disrupt here by German assault force. With a flat half track there. Out there, the 250. 117 though note there were numerous versions of the 25117. This one I believe was sort of more field modified version for the Hammond Göring Falschirm Panzer Division. The more common ones didn't quite have such a big swivel there and the ability to drop down the side armor. Little fun fact there. Strong pass flanking in this area. We do have a large assault here. Incendio grenades will be need to flush out the Vickers crew there. Flak after up to support here with its two centimeter flak. Later versions would be using flak drillings, which basically had more machine guns, basically sort of captured for, well, aircraft really, or used from aircraft as well. No fun fact, either 15 or 20 millimeters. Light infantry gun out here to help deal with sort of the more static Brits. House occupied, eastern site once more in German hands, at least could come into German hands if they can actually grab the territory without suffering from a swift allied counterattack. They're still trying to deal with things here. Kubang being salvaged, they've had to retreat past the flak half track. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. M20 being fixed up there. And here we got more engagement here. Lieutenant Rifle out in the open. No support weapons there from the Germans, though we do have a looks here. Looks out of clearing his to jump out camp from inside the trench there. Rifle out in the open. Well, bigger trench, if you suppose we have to be specific. Still on are doing what they can, but they are being overwhelmed here slowly by the sheer numbers of Americans. Again, there's a bit of lack of troops from nearby. Light infantry gun is firing a bit here. Flak half track there, fight supporting the forces of the section. Sturm Gewehrs and Flak in the center. Six pounder gun coming here as well. And there go looks moving in. They're trying to stay out of range. They'll enter tank rifle eight and abysmally fails. M20 rushing in there. Needs to capitalize to get Panzerfaust. And there you go. Ludwig does it. Needs to get back to the house, by the way. Could lose the M20 here if the looks moves close, but looks like here in this case, Insane Hoshi decides not to push his luck. Flak half track moving towards the centre. Needs to be careful, of course, not to get plastered by six pounder gun. Fine, there we go. Grenades up for Legendary. Pops it. Doesn't quite kill anyone. No field medics out there for Jeremy. Fox goes for the Kedmap support and Flak support moving towards the centre now. Section making a run there for the trenches, but there you go, getting suppressed to six pounder gun though. There, Ooh, under fire already. Oh dear, he's gonna might risk losing that flat half track if he's not careful. Mr. Jeremy, and there we go, we got the AC Mark III out there, and there we go, that flat half track is gonna go down, kaput. Ultimately, didn't really manage that much there, Jeremy overplayed his hand, but then at the same time, it's rather tricky to get the most out of the flat half track. Oh, I think he shouldn't have bothered with it in the first place. You're better off just trying to rush ahead for the next tier and get out some medium armor faster. In the center here, they've got the six-pounder gun there. That should deny it to the Allies. Trying to make way back there to the Belgrade headquarters. Grenade going off there. Falls with the clothes being wiped. Need to retreat there. Pretty schnell. Interesting love. The Germans aren't bothering with any MG-34s here to sort of try and contain the Allies. Infantry in particular here. Legendaries make very good use of infantry to attack and sort of hit several times. Plus the grenades. I mean, really, I think it does force the Germans to have to consider getting out an MG-34 to sort of make it a bit hard for them to about so freely as they are. At least the Allies seem to have dropped sort of harassing the West there. Of course, they're finding we got artillery fire there against the house. 75mm lighter infantry shots. About, I think, four or six of them per battalion. The 
that used to be a sort of a heavy weapons company, which also had a few bigger ones called the Spheras Infanteriker Schutz, which had a 15 centimeter gun, which on Panzer Grenadier Division, sort of the more armored ones, would actually be self propelled, which would be known as the Grille, which would actually use the Marder chassis. In fact, the Marder chassis or the Panzer 38 chassis was used for an awful lot of things. Well, the Marders obviously, Hetzes, Flak Panzer Geparts, and the Grille. It saw a lot of usage over a very utilitarian chassis there. It served the German army quite well. We got flares down here from Jeremy. Not entirely sure what's called in specifically there. It's not like he does know what's there. Oh, wait. Bit of a bow move there, trying to get the looks there with the bazooka from the anti tank. Go with the crew there. At the same time, fresh push up the western side there from Stark. Good work, good work. Germans overall. Very reliant on raw force on false grenadiers, which is opposed to a certain extent is historical, so a lot of them did suffer in terms of training a bit there. And sort of, well, it kind of depended on the quality of them. Less good ones, which generally obviously also have less good officers, so just resort to human wave tactics. Obviously being a bit of a waste there. There go charging forts here. Gonna probably probably send it. No, oh, grenade assault. A lot of grenades there. Knew he'd probably pop so I had to try to catch them there with the grenades that way. Cheeky. Looks like he's going to need some repairs and probably should try and deal with the advance of the Allies in the West. They have re yet to actually grab the fuel point here and Legendary pushes in with another wave of riflemen. Stocked up with grenades and freedom. Rather than getting hit with an incendiary grenade, looks going down here, Fox is flanking in there. Grenades going off there on the Germans, didn't quite do as much this time. Up close there, sort rifles, there for the riflemen. Making short work of them, looks of course supporting here with two centimeter. Kampfang Kanone, artillery fire there running down, so we got a mortar emplacement up here from Stark, covering here the area here, doing heavy casualties to the Germans, nice built there by Stark in the centre there, holding up, and in the west there, counter-attack from L Jeremy, pushes back the Germans there. Fuel-wise, he could take up now and actually begin trying aiming for a medium tank here, as for Insane Hoshi, he could consider maybe a Puma to help deal with light vehicles. For example, the AC Mark III here, would make it much easier for them to deal with it without having to necessarily rely on anti tank guns, which are now going to be more vulnerable thanks to the mortar emplacement. Also noting, Stark is beginning to upgrade his men with Bren guns, increasing their firepower versus the nasty, dastardly Huns. Good work. And there you go, Puma is on the way there for Insane Hoshi. Schwer up, Panzer Spearwagen 234 3. The Puma itself, sort of a result of a scrap reconnaissance tank project, the Leopard, which never really saw any things, in which case it just sort of switched the turret there over to the 234 armored car. AC, they're firing away, closing in the T2, falls they're taking heavy damage out in the open. Six pounder gun, though, gets an excellent hit there for Germany. Lieutenant holding the line, giving time here for the AC to fall back before he retreats as well. Very heroic work there, ambulance bring up forward here to support the Major, meaning, of course, legendary is already set up for medium armor, whereas for the Germans. Nothing there as of yet there. I mean, again, no, Jeremy could have tagged up here. Maybe sort of tried to rush out a yak pants or something, but uh, there's nothing. Fox there again, just head on assault there out in the open versus the M20 versus the rifleman section with Bren guns, and they are taking horrific casualties there. Men just dropping left and right. Huge losses there. Veteran 3 Fox gets caught with assault rifles. Lost him out, even lose the Veteran 4. Insane Hoshi really needs to reconsider his anti infantry tactics. Got the M20 there. Got the Puma moving up as well here. Got a bit of movement here. Folks are sneaking about. Wonder what they could be planning. Section moving up there. Heavily equipped with Bren guns. And Academy needs to retreat before it gets silenced here. But the British Mortars light infantry gun trying to get, get away desperately. But the Bren guns cut down the crew. Leaving, well, one survivor who might not even survive that one. Folks are still punishing him Cool. Looks being repaired here. Not entirely sure why the rushing strange of the Bren guns there. That is over in terms of tactics, what you call pretty bad idea. At the same time, we got a flank here. Looks like going to try and catch the M mortar emplacement here with some grenades. Problem is, there's a Vickers covering it. Still got some vehicles here. Troops are healing, reinforcing. And there you go, flank going in, but there you go, suppressed. Nice idea, but no real reconnaissance ahead. And now going for radio silence, feels a bit late there. Brace up, meaning they can't really pull it off either that way. So rule didn't quite work out. I mean, a nice attempt though. Nice attempt there by Jeremy. Gotta give credit where it's due. It's just... 
Well, there was a Vickers in the way. Otherwise, that could have worked out a lot better. More Storm Pioneers there for Jeremy. No sign of tack up. Again, at this point, he really easily could get out some medium armor to help sort of deal with the allies. I mean, I sincerely hope he isn't trying to play for a command panther at this point in time because that's not really good. That's, in fact, a pretty weak strategic decision, meaning he's basically going to be floating a lot of resources and so tries to try to push with medium armor against the opponent while they can. I mean, that's... I mean, they got a pretty good handle on the map, but still, that is really severe overconfidence that would allow the opponent to get back. In fact, Legendary, while he has suffered a lot of infantry, it's now bringing up medium armor, meaning he's going to have tanks. So, around right here, can't help but feel insane. Hoshi and Jeremy might not have gotten a bit too overconfident, underestimating their opponent. In fact, we got Stark here also taking up. So, in fact, both Allied players are now set for bringing up medium armor versus Germans have got nothing there. They got the Puma, and they got, of course, a mix of anti tank guns, but the artillery is going to make that more difficult. Plus, the Allies do kind of flank, and of course, the Germans are not that good at using cover, it seems. They rather seem sort of uh, think it's silly, which isn't really helping the men or their sort of uh, chances of success. So, there you go. Head on into a lot of Bren guns there, and the casualties are, as expected, pretty high, pretty brutal. Here in the east, we've got Luke's moving up there, got an anti tank, we've got a lot of rifle need to pull back here. Again, no machine guns, no cover. He's not even trying to set up, you know, defensive position using sandbags here. Well, he's still in a 50 caliber, which is something. I mean, that's for sure, but still, an MD-34 here there might have helped as well. AC flanking, using smoke to move in as well there. Engaging the Puma there. Six pounder guns, they need to get the Puma out there, need to get the looks. It's going to be close here. Oh, the lot of anti-tank weapons setting up there. Puma hits, a kid never shoots, almost got it, ah, gets the AC, damn that was close, but Sherman moving up here, wipes the 50 caliber, the only, same smoke there to help them get the AC, covers the Sherman up, they're lying in cheese to get away there. In the west though, the allies could easily you know, cut off a lot of resources there from the Germans if they were just harassed there, but they don't seem uh, particularly interested in that at the moment, so that's really something there they could improve upon. Nothing further here. Sherman there with three kills, could grab that 50 color back there, go next anti tank and then being pulverized by Bren gun fire there. MD34 covering here. Oh, yeah, that's actually an MD34. They finally called up one there. And Jeremy's really full of resources. This is really feeling like he's just going to play straight for the command. Panther feeling very confident to get away with. Apparently, never considering he could just go for regular Panther sooner, which is going to do more or less the exact same job, but without, you know, jeopardizing chances of victory by giving the allies time to get back in the fight. I mean, that's really the problem you go for sort of really big calling stuff. You tend to tend to lose a lot of tempo, a lot of momentum, and you also give your opponents a really good chance of getting back here. That's generally something you don't want to do. Again, rule number one is you don't help your opponent when you play companies too. And so far, Insane Hoshi and Jeremy are breaking that one with a capital B. For breaking, that is. So far from on the way here for Stark, I mean, pretty much, which means, of course, once German and St. Hossi bring up whatever they got there, they're going to be heavily outgunned. I mean, they're going to be outnumbered even, most likely. And, of course, the Firefly is going to be very much imminently set up for dealing with that because it's not good at dealing with a lot of targets. But um, they're not going to be presenting a lot of targets at this rate. Meaning the Firefly is going to have a very much well-suited environment to it, it, which is a target, well, poor environment. Jumping up, it's a border banter tank gun right near. Good play there, and there we go. Jeremy does go for the command panther, but imagine if he, you know, just gone for regular panther, he could have probably had one out much sooner. So that's a little thing there to consider. Smoke screen down here by by Slendy. Yeah, good play there. Stark finally again getting move on here. Again, no real use of cover here by the Germans. Just charging in, they're relying on the raw force of the Sturm Gewehr to push through. Gets a section though, it's not too bad. Firefly moving up here as well. Falling back, they're quickly realizing he's got himself into quite a predicament. Quick grenade there against the six pounder gun. Almost wiped the crew again. And over here, Sabs need to pull back here. In this case, the raw force from Jeremy does overwhelm here. Costing Stark two units. Even as he's fighting here in the east. Because they're in a bit of a sticky position as well. Got radio silence there from Jeremy. He seems to like it. Morton plays from their Vecchi 2, close to Vecchi 3. 
Of course, that means they can't really see things being grabbed. And there you go, the false gun that is standing about in the field of their own dead men. Secure it. Grabbed advancing, being suppressed here by the MD-34 Storm Pants advancing. Puma keeping a watch, and the Luke's here. Veterans in three as well, somewhere about. Big two points wise, a certain need there for the Germans over the Allies. Firefly shoots, and I think trying to break the anti tank, it doesn't quite land a hit there with the 17 pounder gun. Panther moves in. Enemy causing trouble, trying to take one of our points. Shoots, hits, right. penetrates. Sherman moving up here, veterans who won six kills for America. Lieutenant advancing, and not how sure marches so quickly into the uh, den of the Reichsiegel here, and ends up suffering a lot of losses, I think, rather than neatly today, but there's a lieutenant, but not really doing much for the return for it. Sherman needs to fall back here before the Germans overwhelm it. I mean, a Puma right now, with support from the Command Panther, with a coordinated fire, could actually do a lot of damage there quickly. But in this case, managed to bait them into the, the anti-tank gun there. Artillery called in here. Searing artillery. The thing is to keep in mind, though, you need line of sight. Otherwise, it doesn't really work here. I believe. Fifth cover they're covering, but now being hit there by a lot of artillery fire there. Gets away at the same time, get a bit of light pressure, center west. Shanks has not been wrecked, and we got a Calliope out there for Lady Navy, who then goes for a doctrine. Also, in St. Josie here with fortifications, who's also floating a lot of resources. Also, time for the McGimmon also loading. Now we've got a Mechanist Regiment for Jeremy, but no attempt to say, you know, going from all medium armor. All right, what's the situation in terms of damage? Reasonably close, actually, between the two. In fact, kills wise, it's also close, although Jeremy is, in terms of kills, not doing too well. In fact, he's quite behind and is also suffering quite a lot for it. Legendary is also suffering a lot for it. I mean, but he's sort of slightly more expected, I suppose, compared to, you know, Jeremy. So it's slightly more problematic there, I suppose, in a sense. But overall, in that sense, it overall seems mostly equal there in terms of army value. If we can sort of click things properly here. The Germans are sort of leading here again. Legionnaire has suffered some rather brutal hits there. But of course, with the climbing ring, and of course, might be able to sort of punch for a bit harder, particularly how the Germans handle the infantry. But again, all those mostly equal there, mostly equal. In terms of resource float, though, the Germans are floating a lot. Then, particularly again, insane horse. I mean, you can just see here, it's completely... Crazy, it's like a bubbles there, and the problem is this is not the good. Well, when it comes to I mean, economy, there's never really any good bubbles, are there? They're usually always going to burst in some kind of terrible way. And of course, the burst here is not, you know, oh dear, he's got no more resources. It's more like, you know, oh dear, now my opponents have a lot more resources in the field, crushing my resources in the field. Meaning, once I then spend my resources, there's going to be overall less resources for me on the field compared to my opponent, who then uses his resources more effectively. I mean, this is basically what it is. It is poor resource efficiency. They're being displayed by Jeremy and Sane Hoshi. And again, it really feels like just sheer overconfidence right here. Sheer overconfidence. It is hubris of a great scale there. And Jeremy sort of again calling the command tank, but Hoshi is still very much sort of stuck in a sort of hubris mode, floating a lot of resources in for no real good reason. And again, both are sort of trying, I think, to play for the big stuff. And the problem is, if you're going to... One wants to play for the big stuff, that means the other one has to play for the medium arm to at least keep some kind of tempo, momentum, and pressure up against the opponents. Problem is, both of them seem to be playing for the big stuff, meaning there's no pressure, nothing there to prevent the allies from getting out a lot of medium stuff, and then hurting you really bad. Meaning, once you bring up the medium armor or the big stuff, it's not going to really have as much presence as it could have. So that's really something there to keep in mind. But the Allies need to pressure more here on the west side. Again, they're way too lenient there about doing damage. So they're just too consent here with sort of a meat grinder here, which needs something they need to avoid. They need to try and flank and hurt the Germans from other angles more as possible. Though, of course, again, to a certain extent, it can work for them with the Calliope if they can sort of drop the infantry and, of course, annihilate it. And, of course, in that regard, the Germans, of course, have to change the tactics and, of course, themselves try to flank more. Uh, as for the Allies, Stark needs to choose a doctrine. Overall, all three doctrines can work out quite nicely. It's just a matter of what does he want, really. But I do think at this point he needs to choose one. Otherwise, more Fireflies. Considering again, the Germans are playing for a lot of big stuff. More Fireflies would be absolutely good and would lock it down very hard. Again, if they aren't playing for medium armor now, which again, doesn't seem like they are. Otherwise, maybe take up for Hammer and then calling up a Comet could also be a good choice there for Stark. As for Legendary, maybe a Jackson to support the Sherman here. 
But otherwise, again, the analysts need to try and flank more up manure more, and of course, try to deny the resources here. Maybe sort of try to hit some of the trucks behind them. Of course, overall, try to keep the Germans a bit more wrong footed. But again, doctrines needed. As for the Germans, well, I've sort of already hinted at it, but stop floating. Build some Schwer Panzer quarters in good positions. Get out some medium armor and begin pressuring the opponent a bit hard. Maybe you can continue trying to hit, for example, one of the bases, like, for example, Stark's base is so isolated from the rest of the thing that if they just see, grab a lot of armored vehicles, hit it, they could probably wreck it before the Allies could react. And then maybe, you know, that way further keep him off the field, then allowing them to bring down Legendary and then hitting his base. I mean, they've got a lot of options there. But again, the Germans need to drop the sort of hubris mode they're currently running in because it is very much hubris mode they are running very much hardcore on. So again, they need to drop that insane Hoshi, Jeremy, need to plonk down Schwer Panzer quarters, need to bring up some Panther Fours, Panthers or Yak Panzers, just something from the Schwer Panzer quarters. And they need to do it as soon as possible. So let's return to the fight here and see if Insane Hoshi and Jeremy awaken from the arrogance or if they will be brought down there like a Teutonic Icarus as they're Wings melt as they get too close there to the sun. In this case, the sun of freedom. Anyways, folks, they're close being gunned down there. Panther knocked out, they're heavily damaged. And now it's being up, you guys are forced to try and break through there again. They're not really trying to rely on the hammer approach here, sort of shatter the way through instead of just trying to actually bring up some medium armor. And again, you know, try to sort of hit their opponents with that. And even I wouldn't really call the Stukas of Fus the best artillery for that kind of work there. It's sort of an awkward artillery piece. And now we see Insane Hoshi. And he's building the spare plans at quarters good. The problem is he's doing it right to the next to the front line here. Which is usually where it's going to be caught in again right next to the meat grinder. Which means he can call up in a lot of artillery. And in fact it's even being built right now. And of course they could just see it and call in a Calliope Barrage on it. In fact that's what's happening right now. Meaning that could actually get knocked out or at least heavily damaged. There you go, Rocket Bash down there, Fox are taking heavy losses, a Kedden effort, Puma's taking hits here, Infinity charging forwards there, Schwer Panzer's quarters, tiny sliver of health there, tiny sliver of health there, Fox Kennedy is being murdered here in the center section, finding there's another Fox Kennedy hold there, from Jeremy, in the west point being grabbed there, Command Panther hanging back, Stugas was out there for Jeremy, Insane she's building up now a Howard, sir, except he's not finishing it, because he's desperately trying to build, repair his Schwer Panzer's quarters, which of course, in his sheer moment of arrogance, he built up so absolutely close, it didn't even make sense, of course, gets knocked out by a firefly. And right now, the Germans are being punished very badly for, you know, not being that smart moments ago. Get the Vickers, though, but this Drugas of Fuss, I suppose that's not all bad here. Panther gauging a section here, all on his own machine guns bang down upon them. Sending them running, scurrying back home for tea and biscuits. And some fresh underwear. So Veterans won for the Calliope in its very first barrage. That's not good for the Germans. That is not good for the Germans. They also lost the Puma there. So overall Insane Hoshi suffered heavily for that one again. That was some severe punishment there for floating, but also just some really poor tactical decision making there. MG-34 wiped as well, he's seen or she's plunged into the abyss there, continues. Firefly there now with Tula rockets as well here. Hit there on the... looks close to v five. Finding here for the fuel point, we got a full squad moving up there, Vection 3 Versus Bren gun fire there, taking losses. Command Panther to the rescue as well here for the Fulks gun ideas. Firefly slowly ages ahead again. And he's going for a second Strugas Fussy, Jeremy. There's so much armor being brought up and so other mobile elements, yet he's just bringing up more rocket artillery. At this point, you have to wonder, is Jeremy actually paying attention to what's going on in the battlefield? Is he just playing along according to sort of IKEA manual going on in his head? Not really reacting to what's going on, but just again, acting according to what he thinks he needs. Got artillery out here for us. In fact, they're bringing up so much artillery, they, they don't really seem to realize, again, they also need to bring up something that can actually handle the armor and the infantry, because it's not like the Allies have that many support weapons. Yeah, there you go. And now they're trying to silence the mortar emplacement. Another Firefly there for Stark. The Germans are really going to be punished here for all 
of the artillery and not enough real armor. Lartman, who may be forced to go in the west. Stuart Pine is being pushed back. Akkad, now for Lieutenant Ralph moving out here. Stuart Bruce needs to fall back. Looks the command panel support there firing away. Firefly needs to get up there until tank is being pushed more forward to this. Rifleman, Lieutenant moving ahead here. No upgrades by for the rifle in terms of weapons. Panther almost down into the Firefly, close to Vicente 2. Which means a higher rate of fire, meaning it's going to be an even bigger mess there. And there we go. Vicente 2 for the Firefly. I think Insane or she's at this point going for the King Tiger. And this is forces are barely existent. Forces are flanking in, Vicente 5. Well, she is not calling in the King Tiger despite easily having the resource at this point. Well, so of course, he's lacking something. I think he has to build a medic or battle group headquarters as of yet, meaning even if he's banning for the King Tiger, he can't get it. Meaning, I mean, his plans are even silly as initially believed. Then initially believed. And there you go, he's going for the truck, meaning again. He was planning for a King Tiger, but was doing so not terribly well. Again, hubris and arrogance here quickly further undermining any sort of uh, strength that Insane Hoshi and Jeremy might have enjoyed at a certain point. Sherman engaging Fulton is out in the open. Halfway to Vetchen T3. Big shot there from the Firefly, fails to hit. Second Firefly other than nearby. Foxman is charging forwards here. Grenades would be, I think, good here for Stark to help punish, you know, Jeremy's blobbing. Stion about to get wiped out there by the Lieutenant. Good work, pinned down here though. Firefly's going in there. We got air support called in. I believe Sherman Calliope number two called in there for Legendary. Firefly pulling back in the face of the Command Panther. Oh, she needs to set up his track and he's doing some really close to the front line, right next to his teammates' battle group headquarters for some reason. Just to you know, keep it redundant, I guess. First battle group headquarters, they're close to getting wrecked here. Germs are taking heavy cash, they've got suing until they called in here in an attempt to break up the ally attack here. Spare fire. Again, never cleared out. Sherman gets the battle group headquarters, meaning this one might actually serve a purpose. Calliope, though, called in on it. Sherman almost being knocked out there by searing artillery. More Calliope's unleashing hell there against the German positions. Complete chaos and pandemonium. Start though has yet to go for reduction here. Spun up and, ready for and finally Insane Hoshi can call in that bleeding King Tiger. And there we go. But again, just to look at how quickly things have changed in the matter of moments because the Germans just kept floating and not bringing up any sort of real numbers in armor. Except they've just kept playing for Command Panthers and King Tigers. Rocket hit there on my Kedner for Fulton's charging forwards out into the open. Section there getting blasted. And we got the King Tiger there arriving to the battlefield with this high velocity 8 mm gun in the west. We got the section moving up there. And the looks finally goes down here to another veteran to three Firefly needs to get out of there quickly though before it gets knocked out here by the King Tiger or the Command Panther, which thankfully here for Stark's case at least isn't pursuing. German and Sane Hoshi at this point apparently working not frightfully well together. So four vehicle kills there on that Firefly already plus an infant building kill. Really firing all over the place here. Western victory point being seized by a low health section. Strong parts beginning to clear out that job. We got more academy efforts here for Jeremy. There's two stickers of forces are having limited effect and certainly aren't helping with the main issue, which is all the tanks, the armor, and of course the infantry. Meaning overall, that's a lot of fuel just thrown away in that. And again, we're talking one and fuel for each Stuka Sufus. You could have gone for a Panther for that, or Panzer Fours. Again, I can't help but feel here, Jeremy and Hoshi are kind of playing against, 
with a plan that isn't quite accounting for what's actually happening on the battlefield. Just thinking, well, this always works. I'm sure of it. Meaning they're not even really acting or reacting. They're just sort of doing without much necessarily big thought to it. Another Calliope Barris here being unleashed by Legendary's Calliope's. Trying to silence the German positions under a storm of rockets and death. Trolls coming in taking heavy losses left and right. Being good use of reconnaissance by the way to look for good targets. Killing numerous units here. Much better than the Germans were doing with their Strugas of Fusses. And they, I think, uh, how it's there. They might have better luck than the Strugas of Fusses. Alright, better Strugas of Fusses hit there. Actually did some damage here to the Allies for once. 19 kills, not close to victory 2. But again, Jamie here continue to float a lot of resources, a lot of fuel. Fresh trenches being dug. Germans very much in the back foot here. And their tactics continue to just be, you know, attack the Allies head on instead of trying to outmaneuver them. And somehow catch a bit off guard with that. Jackson on the way there for Legendary. More tanks, so to help deal with the few tanks the Germans have. Quick hit there against the Command Panther. From the Vetch into 3 Firefly. Barely any troops left by way for the Germans. In particular, Hoshi has really thrown away a lot of infantry at this point. Senselessly. Now so many Air different types of Shermans. We've got Calliope's, Fireflies, and regular Shermans. And the regular Sherman is closing in on Vetsons, you flee. Section holding up the trench there against German artillery. We've got Fireflies bringing up the King Tiger being engaged there. 217 pounder guns there impacting on the armor. The Kidnapper didn't hear with a bit of a flank by the looks of it. Calliope badge is going off again against the German positions. Sherman not really doing much there. I think he's trying to silence the Stukas of Fusses. Sadly, the rocket still. Oh, almost gets one of the Stukas of Fusses. Close there, close there. King Tiger pulling back, then seeming to move forward against Fafla's going up against the Panther. Almost gets it. But the Panther does blitz away to escape here. Still flying ring down the Fultz Grenadiers. And we got Flare Star on there for Jeremy again. Probably looking for some targets with Stukas of Fusses to murder away. King Tiger advances halfway to Vetchancy 1. He really hasn't been able to do much, which again just further points out again the silliness of the way he just floated so many resources. When the ends of the opponent then has to feel it in such a manner. He can't really do much with this King Tiger without getting hammered away at by tank destroyers and fireflies. Another Vetchy 2 Firefly there, Vetchy 3 engaging the command panther there, close to getting knocked out actually. Had he fired some tulip rockets, he probably could have gotten it right then and there. MG34 covering up here from on the hill, pushing back the lieutenant. Again, the Allies could do more on the western flank, and I still think, you know, you'll benefit from a grenade instead of getting hit with a grenade. And there we go, this is going to get wiped. And we got air support here from Sarko, finally chooses Vanguard, straight from support, called in here, rockets, and machine gun fire there, breaking against the jump assist. King Tiger there taking hits from the fireflies. One got knocked out though, calling in another one immediately here to replace the one lost. More Calliope barrages. Hoping to catch the King Tiger in this case, whiffing quite remarkably. Sherman here dealing with the MD-34 up on the hill, pushing that away. It's very close to Vincent Defleet. Big two points wise, the Allies now have a small lead. No, he cancels the Firefly for a crocodile here to burn through the f German lines. Or to shoot a bit through them. Continued rocket badges here. Down for six and now Moon Crater. I'm sure they wish they could hide on the moon at this point. And we got more saving support here. How are getting hit by B-47s? And who knows what else?
Centre victory point grabbing, but of course Mortifier still here from the Morton Platon running down. Got a Ford assembly that support it. Crocodile moving in there. Straight through the German lines. Firefly covering it. And of course the Crocodile can soak up a lot of hits, making it quite good for this job. In fact, that was his job to attack it in. But there you go. Good focusing there by Jeremy on the Firefly, taking out the bigger priority threat there. Firefly failed to pop off its Tulip rockets. We could have maybe neutralize the Panther just a bit here. Not entirely sure what he's shooting at there. I guess that was a misclick from Insane Hoshi. Anti tank. Oh, how's there wiped out? Lieutenant needs to be careful to take fire there from the King Tiger. Command Panther advancing. By the way, Vetchen T2. Western Victory Point being lost as well. Need to fix up the Firefly. So you're going to have to take on the Germans again. Sherman, they're taking fire there from the Rakedma. Need to fall back before it gets blown up. Brewed up. And there you go. In this case, Lenke was too late. Losing. Oh, it hits Vets in the free just as it blows up. Rav Squad also wiped up. There you go. Rockets there. Straight on to the combined defense there of the Germans. Wiping out so many units there for she's. And we got self repair here. We got vehicle crew repairs. Quickly fixing up things here. Come on, Panther, we have Central Academy of Supporting here. Where do you want? The new engineers, we're losing a capture point. Calliope advancing once more. And again, neither Jeremy or any saying that she's doing anything to maybe bring up some more tanks. Then we got a pack out here, which is now, of course, spotted by air reconnaissance and getting knocked out by the sort of the Ked Mapper set up to cover it. I mean, really good use there of air reconnaissance by the Allies. Good job there. I just wish they'd done more to arrest the western side. Main gun knocked down the Panther almost knocked out here. King Tai Yen really just can't do much if he just gets hit with every anti-tank weapon the Allies got. And they got nothing to support it with, work it with. Stump has been pushed back there. Crocodile advances continually. Could actually go straight for the command panther knocking out at the moment. In this case, looks like Stark is quite thinking about that. Germans have very little left at the moment here. Very little left. And there you go. I think that was a misclick there from Jeremy. Loses his one stuck of us there. Kedna firing away at the Firefly. There you go, should be spotting the Command Panther there. Oh, he doesn't. More air support called in there for Stark. King Tiger advancing, fire flaming up support here. Good hit there by the King Tiger on the Crocodile. Firefly gets off a good hit as well. Pulling back then in the face of the King Tiger. More rocket fire here. Up, not getting a command panther here. More rockets here around the battle headquarters. Rockets flying down here. Jeremy's men are taking an absolute horrific beating here. Absolute carnage. And there you go, command panther spotted. There you go, two of rockets. That command panther is dead. Stukas of us also pretty much dead. No chance of survival here. And there you go, command panther down. Command panther down. And Stugas was down as well. The Germans are broken with that. GG. Game over. Panzerlehr forced to pull back here. A brutal slaughter in the end. Overall, what happened for the Germans again is basically you can either call it Fuhrer Syndrome or just complete sheer arrogance. I don't know. Choose it yourself. Well, basically, again, they had a good start. But the problem was, again, what happened to a lot of German players, I think any overall player that seems to sort of get an advantage, instead of actually trying to then take advantage of it, what they'll do is just wait for a big tank to call in. In this case, it basically allows the other side, if they got the brains about them, to bring up medium armor to push against them, ensuring the heavy tanks can't really get much of a foot down to the ground. And that's basically what happened here. By the time that a command panther, up, there's already begin to bring up tank destroyers and the likes. And by the time the King Tiger ran, there was so many tank destroyers and other bits there, the King Tiger couldn't do much without getting countered. Again, they never brought up any medium armor. No Panzer IVs, Yak Panzers, or regular Panthers. Nothing. I mean, absolute abysmal late game failure. Then again, it's surprisingly common. Again, there are a lot of players that need to get it into their heads that you can't just, you know, wait and call it in. You need some medium armor first to actually establish the grounds for the heavy armor track to work with.
And that's basically what happened here. Uh, they failed. Also failed to flank more often. I suppose also the Allies could have done better. But at least they sort of had counted the Allies or Germans play. Which is also rather relied a lot on infantry. Sort of just being hoarded forwards. Which then only made the Calliope's even better choices to counter that. I mean really the Allies figured out what the Germans were doing. And they hard counted it. And again, the Germans just played straight into it repeatedly. They never tried to play around it. They never tried to adapt and change tactics or strategies. I mean, overall, the Allies here played very well. The Germans played initially well, but then played the hand and revealed the actor didn't have a hand. And then just sort of fuddled through in the end and got wrecked hard. So there you go. I hope you learned some lessons, some very vital lessons. If you didn't subscribe, like, share, and of course, comment on it. If you'd like to send a replay, of course, feel free to do so. But do provide details, replays, just an end with absolutely nothing on it. I won't bother with. Do provide comments and, of course, links to where on the uh, leaderboards. And always, of course, feel free to comment on the video itself. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers. Thank you for watching. Up till tomorrow for another exciting episode. Bye.